Good morning, everybody. It is good to see you in the house of God this morning. How are you doing? Good. Okay, well, let's try that again. Give me a whoo. All right. How are you doing this morning? Whoo! All right, good. Awesome. Would you stand? We're going to pray, and we're going to believe that as we come close to God, he's going to move in whatever circumstance you got. I believe today's going to be a powerful service. You know why? Because when we honor God, he shows up. Amen? Amen. All right. God, today we thank you that we get this opportunity to gather in your house. God, we thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for the heat. We thank you for hot coffee, too. And Lord, we just are so excited to see you move in our lives and in this place. God, to, when we gather together as a body of believers, we have authority in the name of Jesus. And so today, Lord, we just come into your house Whatever we got going on, we put that at your feet. We just drop whatever we're holding on to, and we're going to lift our hands and just praise you. Because no matter what's going on, you are good, and you are worthy of our best praise today. So, God, we are excited to see you move. We are excited that we get this opportunity to worship, and we're excited to hear your word today. So, God, we just praise you for all that. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Singing in my soul, I got a sweet salvation, and it's beautiful. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation, and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing, cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Take one second and bump your neighbor's elbow. Just welcome him into the house of God and say, it's good to see you.
my heart will sing no other name jesus jesus my heart will sing no other name jesus jesus my heart will sing
we give you praise and honor in this place that you are our deliverer, you are our healer, you are our comforter. God, when our back is against the wall, when we feel trapped, when we feel out of control, no matter what's going on, we know that you are right there fighting for us. So God, today with joy in our hearts, we just proclaim that you are a deliverer, you are a miracle worker. No matter what's going on, Lord, we, we can declare with all of our might that you are good. And we just thank you for that today in Jesus' name. May be seated. I'm going to invite the ushers forward. We're going to continue to worship as we give. So I'm excited. So today we get an opportunity. All right. Who's in dire need of a miracle right now? Okay, a couple people. I, that's like kind of the, uh, the answer I had anticipated. If you need a miracle, it's the perfect time to reach up your hands to run after God with all you got and receive it. And if you don't, it's the perfect opportunity to sow some seed in faith, right? You don't start sowing seed when you're hungry. You gotta start way in advance. You gotta plant the seed when you don't need it, right? So whether you need it or if you don't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge you to worship with your offering today. Would you hold it up right now? God, today we thank you that you, you've given us time. Lord, for those that need a touch and a miracle in their health or finances or whatever is going on, Lord, God, we believe that your word says when we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. So we take you at your word and we believe that. And Lord, for those of us, things going well, we sow our seed, our offering in faith. And God, we believe that you will move in it. Sometimes it's hard to sow the seed and just watch the ground and nothing happens. But Lord, we're going to thank you in the, in the midst. So God, I just praise you for being a miracle worker in our finances today. And we just praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. So they're going to pass the buckets amongst you. And then when they've done that, stand up and worship with us. This is a house of worship. This is a place of
Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. understand that Lord we believe that you are working all things to good for who we are in you for those that love you Lord we're thankful for that and we bring glory and honor to who you are in this house we are thankful in this house we are grateful and Lord we adore you God, receive our worship today. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this house. Give the praise and worship team a little appreciation as well. And, and if you are a guest here this morning... We would love for you to find a little green card in front of you in the pew. If you don't see one, put your hand up and we'll get one of the ushers to, well, they won't run over to you, but I encourage them to walk fast. How's that? And uh, fill that out and, and somebody can replace this sticky one. This is one that I spilt communion juice on and uh, it's a little sticky. So... Please fill that out. And, and some other announcements this morning. It's the holiday season, and there's a lot going on in our lives. Amen? And uh, someone asked me, says, Pastor, are you busy? And I just laughed. I didn't know what response to have. And, and so with that being said, we're all busy. We're all kind of trying to catch up. But I pray that this season... You take time to slow down. You just take time if it's punching your alarm 15 minutes earlier just to get up and, and spend some time with God and, 
and rejoice over all that He is doing in your life and for your life. And, and remember to be an encouragement to someone because today there are several that are not here in service that was normally here because they've traveled across this United States. Uh, Sonia just buried her mother. Uh, we have Judy and Steve that Steve not just lost one, but two of his relatives. There, there's a lot going on when we, when we think about trying to get connected to the things that is happening when all these other things start to intrude. So take time to reach out. Take time to give a little understanding of how much you love someone. Amen? This coming Sunday at 10 a.m. here in the house of God, we are doing our children's program. Anybody excited? All 12 of you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> No, it's an exciting time. So next Sunday morning, we'll have three or four songs of worship, and then all of our kids will be gathering up here. And I look so forward to our kids' program. So come and be a part. For those watching online, the only way to see this program is to be in the house. Amen? Amen. So come early. Claim your seat. I'll just stop right there because that could go <laughs> bad. And then that night, if you've signed up, uh, remember to check in Sunday morning. If you've signed up for Christmas caroling, we will meet here at the church at 5. And uh, there may be 10 or 12 homes that we're going to this year. It'll be a wonderful time. Amen. And then the special time for me is on Friday night, Christmas Eve. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful time, very elegant, very meaningful that we come together and together as a family. Those that are watching, invite someone to come and be a part. That Christmas Eve service, we'll be having communion. There'll be a short devotion, but it's a scripted service that has been prepared from the hearts of, of the worship leaders uh, there will be biblical reading, and, and it's just going to be a wonderful time. How, how many has experienced Christmas Eve candlelight service here at Spirit of Life? Amen. Amen. Beautiful time in the Lord. So come and be a part. It will start at 6. It should be over by 7 or a little after 7. And um, then you have plenty of time to go home and, and be with your other family. But come, and, and let me just say from my heart, <laughs> You guys are a net nice family. We don't have family that's any closer than six hours away. So we get to spend Christmas Eve with our family. So come and be a part. Amen? Amen. Amen. On the screen in front of you, you might see one picture. You might see three pictures. I don't know what's going to come up because they were giving me a hard time from the media. There's number three. Is it coming? Bob, your head. We're just... Okay, no, there it is. And I told him, I said, choose one of those three. <laughs> to present to you the title of this message. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. That's what we have hope for. That God came to this earth as a newborn babe that you and I would know who He is and have this wonderful relationship through salvation. Not always do we find that there's a, a blessing coming our way, but this morning we stand in this house as your pastor, and I want to proclaim that the Son of God came to this earth to where you to be the Son of God upon this earth. Now think about that for a moment. That the Son of God came that we may become sons and daughters of a living God. 
So the joy that has come to this world is for you and I to rejoice within. Through the desperation of times, through the desperate times, and some of the things that we have coming upon us, we can find true joy when we have a true relationship with who Christ the King is. Turn your Bibles with me to the second chapter of the book of Luke. Starting with verse 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. These passages of scriptures that I'm reading to you, never think that I'm being repetitive of when I stand here, but there's some days that re repetition in our life gets us to understand it brings knowledge and learning to us. You know, we're living in a society that everything is bells and whistles and media and that. There's some days the best thing we can do is sit down, hopefully, with a Bible that the binders wore out on. And we can open up and we can read these wonderful stories that bring us to a place of understanding of who we are. Next verse. And behold, the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. I want you to focus upon one scripture. Verse 10, it says, Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The joy of what we have in our life today was announced to just a few on a hillside, a few lonely shepherds. They got to experience something that none of us have ever experienced, a host of angelic voices filled the night air and praised God. Could you imagine the joy that was felt? Annette and I have been privileged to be at a few very large Christmas concerts. One at one university that had over 300 voices in it. They didn't need microphones. And when they sang, they sang with joy perfection of what they learned and what they were taught, but they praise God. And this song, Joy to the World, has such a meaning into our life. This time of, of the year, we know Christmas is about celebrating God's peace, His love, and His joy. Christmas, the very word, brings to joy to our heart. When we think of all those that are hungry, we find joy in giving to the needs of others. Anybody find joy when you give unto someone that's less fortunate than you? How many has ever found joy in giving to someone that is better off than you? It is better to give than it is to receive. The joy of giving comes from from who God is in our life, the joy of who we are able to serve and to glorify and to honor. Did you hear the first word? Able to serve. We know without any doubt 
that joy was what God experienced the very first day he created man. He looked upon man. He looked upon all creation and he says, I find it pleasing to me. See, in this house today, for those that are watching online, we have opportunities to bring glory and honor to God through the joy that we have within our spirits. It says in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, without peace within your heart, within your mind, within your spirit, you'll never find joy. Matter of fact, if you don't have the peace of God, if you don't have a relationship with God, you will struggle to find what true joy is. Amen or oh me. See, without God in our lives, it means that we are separated from God. And, and what separates you and I from God is sin. It's a sin in our life. It, it's coming to that place. And, and again, I'm walking this way because I miss seeing some of your faces for that big pole. No, we can't cut it out of there because the building will fall. But I'll come over here where I can smile at you. Sin separates us. You can try to fill your life with all the things of this world. You can try to make yourself feel happy. But happiness is fleeting. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the knowledge of who He is in our life, that's our strength. So even in the time of depression, even in the time of loss, we can find joy because we have Christ within us. We can find the joy of the Lord in our lives because Christ has given Himself for you and I. And for some, the concept may be brand new for you that's sitting here. But I need to share with you that this Christmas, this Christmas is a time to celebrate God's love. Even if you're having hard times, like I encourage you, get up an extra 15 minutes and just spend time in the Word of God. Go through a few scriptures that may not be Christmassy for everyone, but maybe go to the scripture of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the gift of what God gave us. The joy of knowing that we are just a breath away, a thought away, a spoken word away, of having the greatest gift that has ever been given. And that is a relationship with who God is through His Son, Jesus Christ. Before service, someone came and asked me about someone. My only answer to them was, they need God. Wouldn't it be wonderful... That we could give Jesus away with no gift receipt for them to return him? <laughs> Come on, smile. It was almost funny. Almost. But wouldn't it be great to be able to deliver who Christ is from who we are in him to someone and say, this is my gift to you this day. And you're able to bow your knee or bow your heart and express to them how much God loves them and how much Jesus loves you and me. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. One part of that says, let 
nature sing. You want to find joy? Get up early one morning and just, it's winter time, so make sure you're bundled up, but step outside and listen still to the birds that are around. Even in the midst of the snow and the ice that was built up just a little bit the other day, if you listen, you can hear the joy of nature. You can listen and hear the joy of what God is doing for nature itself. You want to find a joyful, relaxing place? Go down to a stream somewhere. From us southern people, those are cricks. Not in your neck. It's water that flows down through a low place. And listen to the water. Bring glory and honor to God as it runs over the rocks. And has that bubbly sound. Wouldn't it be awesome if we all had a bubbly sound that just came out of us? Well, let me clarify that for a moment. <laughs> Not necessarily it's all bubbly sounds. <laughs> ah, just think about it. Come on, I'm going to make you laugh if I have to come down there and tickle you. No, I ain't doing that. I got to tell you, we had our elders Christmas party Friday, and at, uh, at a certain point, we start playing games, and we had an amazing time playing games, and, and we played one game, it's called Taboo, nobody judge me for the name of the game, but it's where words come up, and then you can't use other words to describe that word, and you're in competition. I peel the word up, and the word was ransom, you know. Somebody gets kidnapped, you ask for a ransom. But how my brain works, all I could think of, I went for a jog and I ran some. <laughs> I passed on the word. Because uh, you'll never see the word again without thinking about it. <laughs> the pastor went off for a jog and he ran some. Um, eh, we're just laughing and Finding, anybody finding that if you laugh a little bit, you, you start to have joy in your life? Yes. Scripture says, a cheerful heart. Laughter is good medicine. We, we serve a God that has so much for us. We serve a God that wants us to be rejoicing in Him. Paul wrote, he says, rejoice. <laughs> And always rejoice. Find ourselves coming to an understanding that the joy of the Lord, when we're down and out, the joy of the Lord brings us up and in. When we find ourselves struggling through our lives, we can come to an understanding that if we make ourselves right before God, if we confess our sins and ask God to forgive us of what we do within our minds and our hearts and comes out of us physically. Christ says, if you even thought it, you've already done it. So I encourage you to find yourself accepting Jesus Christ and, and the way that he would have us to go. That we truly can find joy on an ongoing basis within our life. We learn through the angels that their opening statement, do not be afraid. I bring good news to you. This morning, I bring good news to you. What I find, and everybody say, Pastor just said what he finds. What I find in this is that some people don't want to change and become submissive to who God is because they're fearful of change. We're fearful of what we must do. For some, it's a rebellious spirit. You rebel against God drawing you in. You, you want to fight. You want to struggle with it because, because you don't want to change. You, you want to be accepted for who you are, but that's the greatest thing about God's love. He accepts you right where you're at. You don't have to go take... A shower to take a bath in God's tub. I know that's just a weird example, but you'll remember it. I promise you'll remember that. 
But as God has you in the palm of his hand, all he wants you to do is quit fighting. He wants you to become submissive to who he is because the greatest life that you will ever live is a life surrendered to God. And the only way to have that relationship and to truly know what joy is, you have to give yourself over. And some days we allow society to dictate to us. I don't want you to put your hands up, but how many have hated someone because of what someone else has said? Especially if it has several thousand reviews on, on social media. You don't even know the person. How many have been affected? You yourself because someone else had a poor opinion of you that never knew you. Oh, that hit home. See, what God is, He is love. He's peace. He's long suffering. He's joy. We find that we can do all things, but if we don't have the love of Christ in our life, Scripture says it's like a, a bad sounding symbol. But in our hearts and in our lives, we can come to the place that we can accept the good news of what the angels brought that day. And we can accept the good news of what men and women all across this nation is standing behind pulpits preaching today. All around the world, the good news is that God loved you. And he gave his prized possession, his son, that we would have life. And when we accept and receive that, we know that through the process of what we endure, <laughs> that we can overcome all the destruction and all the distress and all the desolation that the world has seemed to buy into. Church, I got a dozen people that was hit by that tornado. Homes, businesses, churches. All through the South. But I can tell you this morning, one church had its entire roof ripped off. It's a Church of God church down in Kentucky. Their services started when the sun came up. And it was standing room only across the parking lot because they were going to give glory to God. You might have seen that church on social media. It's the church where the entire roof is ripped off. If you see it, take note that not a Bible or a songbook in the pew has been moved. Think about it. So they started. They gave glory to God, even through, and see, through the devastation, we can find joy. They brought their praise and their worship to give to a God. They celebrated, even in that desolate time, they still celebrated. And that's where we find joy. See, in Romans 5 and 8, it says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ, he died for us. This Christmas is a time to acknowledge God's presence. See, it's the best news in the world. God loves you. But not only God loves you, but God is with you. And for some, hear this, God is for you. Pastor, you don't know what my life is. I probably do. Lives become repetitive. and It's just different places. 
not different circumstances. It's at different times, not different situations. But God wants you to realize this day that everything that you are has created you to be who you are. But pastor, you don't know. You get some people around you that have given their heart over to God and you used to know them and they wonder what happened to you. It takes place because of the joy within you for the change that God made for you. This day we celebrate salvation. This day we celebrate everything that God is doing. See, from the very beginning when Adam fell, God put a plan together. And he stayed to, true to the plan. Let me get my mouth and head to work together here. He stayed true to the plan. And the plan was that he would send his son. That he would come to this world and to save us. Some think that was the beginning of Jesus, but it's not. Jesus was there at the beginning. He was part of the triune God that created man in his image. God, scripture says, let us create man in our image. Jesus Christ, throughout the word of God, in Genesis, he was the seed of woman. We go through, and, and one day God will release me, I'll, I'll just... I'll give you all the understanding from Genesis to Revelation. But in this house today, it's true that Jesus Christ loves you. God loves you. And He has a plan for you. Miss Mary, if you'll come back to the piano. Oh, the whole team can come up and play something. See, this Christmas, the greatest gift that I, as your pastor, can give you is an opportunity to give your heart over to God. The greatest gift that I can provide to you for those that are watching online is that you would bow your knee, that you would bow your heart and receive Christ into your life. The greatest gift that you can take to those around you is the gift of the knowledge of who Christ is within you. So that's where I challenge you this day. Make sure you're living a life in such a way that you're exalting your relationship with God. Never allow someone to be able to question who you are in Him. See, we should avoid every, everything that could bring a bad taste of Christianity in those people around us. So in this house this morning, I brought you good news. And the good news is that if you walked in here and you have anything that is keeping you or hindering you from a real relationship, the first and foremost thing is sin. But there's also the lack of commitment. Also, you struggle with being submissive. Scripture says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In this house, 
start claiming who you are. I am a son of a living God. I am a daughter of a living God. Can I make a bold statement? Quit copping out with this one. Well, everybody sins. Hogwash. Our first time that I ever used this was in a church in Northern Illinois. God placed it in my heart and it says in all my faults in all my failures I'm still a chosen vessel saved by the grace of God listen to the next line striving for perfection through the love of Jesus Christ Understand that there's two sides to how you present yourself. You either present yourself as a victim, and I, oh, I'm just a sinner. Or you present yourself as victorious. I am saved by the grace of God. And I'm striving for the perfection of who He is in my life. As a pastor, I hear everything. And there's some days all I want to say is suck it up, buttercup. You're not the only one to experience the heartaches of life. That doesn't sound very loving, does it? That's the human side. The spiritual side says this. You know if you give yourself over to God. Now what you find to be impossible... God finds to be possible. We can quote such scriptures as Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ on Sunday. No, through Him who strengthens us. And this is where I come to a close and I'm going to open up the altars. How many of you need strength in here? Strength to make it another day. Strength to get by. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. Christmas. <laughs> Families. Peace. On, if we could just get peace for three hours on family Christmas day. Come on. But joy is our strength. Did you hear that? Joy is our strength. And this year, let us celebrate Christmas with a heart of joy. Now, if somebody's asleep beside you, punch them. Because I wasn't that boy. Everybody still got your supper. God is faithful. Amen? So I'm going to ask you to stand. They're going to sing this song. And there's going to be individuals that will come up here and pray with you, pray for you. That we can find the true joy of Christmas. And that's living a holy life for a holy God. That we can share the good news with everyone we come to meet. Amen. Sing on. This is a house of worship. This is a place of praise. Where every demon trembles. Where we proclaim. You have the fun.
backgrounds and, and if that's ever happened in the church that you used to attend praise God for new things and new attendance <laughs> that you would flip out that's about the most pastoral word I can come up with right now but when we look at what happens at the altar you walk in you walk up and men and women of God surround you and you have a place that when the enemy comes against you and says this is what you have done you can boldly say no I left it at the altar the only way it leaves the altar is if you grab a hold of it and walk back with it so when tears are shed it's tears of submission and tears of joy. So never, never, never think that when we do altar calls, it's for anything religious or anything for a ritual. It's always about the relationship. Amen? Now think about this. Do you remember first time you fell in love with the person 
Can you tell me where it was? Sure you can. I'm not talking about your first or second girlfriend. I'm talking about the wife that you have today or the wife you're going to have in the future. <laughs> I saw those eyebrows. <laughs> Gospel. I'm going to ask that you continue to play and sing. For those that are up here praying, be respectful as a congregation as you go out. I'm going to ask Pastor Luke to close, close, but I'm going to ask a blessing over you. And if you are in need of leaving the sanctuary, I'm going to be out in the foyer. Amen. Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless, that you touch, that you minister. Lord, maybe the decision wasn't made today, Lord, because this isn't an easy decision. But oh, is it a fulfilling decision to follow you, to be your son, to be your daughter. God, I rejoice over decisions that were made here this morning. God, for those that are watching online, Lord, if they have asked you into their life, God, let it be. God, let them find it. If they're, if they're not going because of circumstances, Lord, let them know they come into this house because it's been covered by the blood. But if they're in a distance, God, let them find a church family close by. God, we're, we know by your mighty hand, we, we're, we're washed all around the world. <laughs> God, let us be found faithful in serving you. And Lord, as you bless us, let us bless others. In Jesus' name. Again, I'm going to the foyer. They're going to sing. Pastor Luke, you can close out. God bless.
Jesus, we just receive your vision today. God, I thank you for miracle breakthroughs for every person in this place. God, I just pray for the courage and strength for the people who have recommitted their lives to you today. God, I pray that you would just sustain them as they walk out their salvation today. God, I pray that you would renew faiths and new minds. And God, we just praise you for being a miracle worker in our lives. God, let this be the start today. Lord, help us to take the next step today and the next step tomorrow and keep walking this out. God, I give you praise and glory in this place. God, we take you at your word. We believe you and we thank you. I give you praise for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are dismissed. Have a good day. Happy Sunday.